Kreider regains into the Montreal zone. Down the left wing with a shot in front. Score! Yeah! Rangers win! Mika Zibanejad with the overtime goal. And the Rangers win game five. Lead the series three games to two. Zibanejad set up by Kreider. Mika Zibanejad is the Ranger hero. Two days after his 24th birthday, Rangers win 3-2. Zach is back. It's the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. How about that? That was the Rangers last night. It was worth the eight. Rangers go up 3-2, and now they are one win away from sending the Montreal Canadiens packing. That, of course, was Kenny Albert, and the scream you heard was Dave Maloney on the MSG Radio Network, 98.7 ESPN New York. Rangers get the victory last night in exuberant fashion and now joining us and I had the same reaction as him I was screaming like I was a little girl baby uh, when the Rangers put that puck in last night Mika Zibanejad and now Dave Maloney the former Ranger joins us right now on the Zach Gelb show Dave we appreciate a few minutes thanks for the time and how are you I'm um, well thanks for calling it uh, certainly was an exciting night and uh, you know it was typical of playoff hockey and uh nice to be able to lose your mind once in a while <laughs> at the stage of my career it's um you know it certainly wasn't the first time and i'm hoping it's not going to be the last time it's just wonderful stuff so you screamed and it was absolutely great when i heard it i was just laughing because i thought it was great emotion that was captured on the airwaves and kenny had a really good call in the press box are you fist bumping like what does the visual look like <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, it's funny um, to hear uh, Mika Zibanejad uh, think or suggest or opine after that when he scored, he kind of blacked out. He's not <laughs> quite sure what he did. I'm, I, I'm probably about the same. I, I did. Uh, you know what? I was always a, p- a pretty emotional player, and and uh, you know, I, I get texts from my 83 year old mother, and um, and I know where it comes from because she's uh, she's quite involved also. So. It's uh, it really is fun. I've I've been uh, very privileged to uh, have had the opportunity to play in the best league in the world, and uh, now I have a chance to kind of participate in a very small way, and it's just it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. And last night it was nice to see Mika come through uh, with the goal because you know the man that he was traded for and Derek Broussard was just such mm-hmm. a imperative presence for the Rangers in the postseason the last few years. Just how about him responding last night on the big stage, especially knowing the man that he was traded for? Well, the thing is, it's it's very easy and understandable that um, he's going to be compared uh, with Derek Broussard. Uh, I, I think the coach perhaps even alluded to that when he was asked about Mika, you know, uh, down the stretch and in the beginning of the playoffs so, and his um, – Observation was that Meek had a good start. He broke his uh, foot and uh, or his leg, and he had you know he had some struggles coming back, jumping back into the high speed lane, and yet the playoffs was going to be a time for him to really uh, become an important part of this team. And and uh, that being said, he's a he's a little different player than Broussard, um, and I think he's been uh, a bit rejuvenated actually. Uh, playing with uh, Kreider and uh, Bushnevich, uh, a threesome that saw a little bit of time together in training camp, uh, but hadn't really played an awful lot together since. But there's no question, you, you need uh, you need your center iceman to be involved, and as strong as you are down the middle, uh, will be a lot of times what happens up uh, with your forward group. And so he's been good uh, for certain in the last two games, and they're going to need him to be good and better as they move forward. After seeing the first period last night and then also most of the second period, I didn't think the Rangers were going to win that game. But then they got that break uh, when Shea put the goal in. And then you just saw a different Rangers team in the third period and then also uh, in the overtime session where they were just the better team. Uh, What did you see in that second period? I know Hank was brilliant. But that second period, it was just crazy how this game changes so quickly. Well, listen, I, I, I know that seems to be the common. It, it's totally, perfectly understandable how the first period played out. There is no more emotional building and no more emotional fan base attached to their team than the Montreal Canadiens and, and their fans. The Bell Center on a regular season base is, is a boisterous, raucous event. 
you throw the uh, playoffs into the mix. And for me, to get out of the first period at 2-1, you accomplished what you needed to accomplish. The game was still within grasp. So then you take two penalties back-to-back early in the second. And penalty killers do a good job, but if a penalty kills uh, at least taste effect of igniting some offensive pres- uh, presence, it's accomplished something, and that's what it did. So you, you get yourself into about the midway point, and now you get your feet uh, firmly entrenched. You're still within a goal, and you're still in the hockey game. And I think the Rangers, you can make a clear argument that, or an observation, that the Rangers are a deeper, uh, talented team. Montreal comes hard, there's no question. Uh, they come hard, they play hard, they play with an angle or an edge. Uh, they're an, on, you know, an honest uh, street fighting uh, an opponent. Uh, but the longer the game goes, I think the longer the game, any game goes, talent tends to take hold and skill will take hold the longer it goes. And I think that's how it developed. With Bushnevich playing as well as he's done in games uh, four and five, uh, and taking nothing away from Tanner Glass. Tanner Glass is a valuable uh, part and still will be in this thing. But the Rangers, 12 forwards up front, you've got a nice dispersal of skill. You've got, you have the ability to, uh, to, to roll four lines and not be too worried about matchups. And uh, so I think the game unfolded to me, uh, as long as the Rangers kept it within one with the two penalty kills in the second period, I like their chances. We know how good the Rangers uh, can be and over the years at defense, and they've had some struggles this year at defense, but uh, McDonough was a plus 20. Shea has just been uh, brilliant, and you even saw that last year going back with him. Uh, but two players that I'm loving right now on the Rangers defense, Dan Girardi, who got a lot of criticism last year, and then also Smith. Just how about the play of those two uh, defensemen for the Rangers and Girardi and Smith? Well, Dan Girardi should never be criticized ever. But he was last year. You know, he 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 um, he he is playing now with an ankle that they have actually had to to kind of cut out the inside of his skate so that his ankle can fit in the skate. And over the course of his career, according to the medical trainers, he probably hasn't been a hundred percent healthy uh, for ten percent of his career. And I, I, I'll tell you, I know that you can make the case this way or another, but there is no tougher guy in the league than Dan Girardi, and he has been an absolute foot soldier for this team. Now, will time catch up? It, it catches up with everyone. So Girardi is Girardi, uh, and to me, um, you know, enjoying now the fruits of a team that's up 3-2, he certainly has been a big part of it. The acquisition of Brandon, uh, Brandon Smith at the, at the trade deadline, I, I remember thinking at the time because Washington had picked up uh, Kevin Shattenkirk, and and I, I think that forced the Rangers' hand to take a serious look at Brandon Smith and, and, and do what they had to do to acquire him to get the NHL depth that they needed at the blue line, and he has been better than advertised. The, the, the thing for Brandon Smith, he'll be an unrestricted free agent uh, in the off season, and with every successive game that he's played, that price tag for him is going up. And you know what? He's a hell of a guy. He is a tremendous interview, um, and good for him. He's playing well. The Rangers are playing well, and he's going to get paid in the off season. What was the worst injury you ever played with? Because we all know you hockey players are tough SOBs. Oh boy. Um... Well, I, 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 I don't know. I, I certainly don't know that I played with uh, an injury uh, like Dan Girardi. I'm telling you, his foot is, that ankle is uh, obnoxiously uh, looking limb. It's, uh, I, 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 I don't recall, really. I mean, you always played banged up. I, I, don't, I don't recall being as injured. I'm not sure the game was quite, it certainly wasn't quite as fast. Um, when we played, and it was certainly physical, but I, honestly, I don't remember playing w- with too many debilitating injuries. And we talk about the criticism of Girardi, another Rangers player that's been criticized. And in the last 15 games, though, in the playoffs, he's just been sensational. But the reason why he gets criticized is the perception 
from the way that his postseason career started in New York, and that's Rick Nash. Just how about Rick Nash, not only in these playoffs, Dave, but just the last 15 games that the Rangers have been in the postseason. He's just playing with a different look, and he looks like the best player on the ice after you take out uh, the goaltender at Henrik Lundqvist. Uh, well, he has been the best player on the ice since um, Henrik Lundqvist, and but for the injuries over the course of the season, he was the Rangers' uh, best forward. And I, I, I tossed that up with Zuccarello. I, I'm a big, you know, I, I, I do think that Zuccarello was as important a player up front, uh, and I give him that nod because he played, uh, but for the healthy scratch down the stretch, every game. But Nash is uh, Nash is a consummate pro. Um, he's a very, very uh, smart, astute guy. He's tremendously well respected amongst his peers, um, and he's a bit of a throwback. He's a guy that kind of respects the hierarchy of the game, uh, accepts his role. The best thing that really ever happened this season for Nash uh, was the goals that were scored away from him. Um, and that allowed him to go about, do his job, be a, a consummate three-zone player. And, oh, by the way, chip in 24 or 23 or whatever he got in the regular season. He's got two in the playoffs. So uh, he, he has evolved. He always uh, is – personally concerned um, when he doesn't score he recognizes that he is that's his rep and in a lot of ways he's um, uh, paid to score uh, but there are so many things that he has done uh, on and off the ice for uh, this franchise with who he's been um, you know he's been he's been tremendous wrapping up with Dave Maloney who joins us right now on the Zach Gelb show Fox Sports 920 the Jersey are the Habs just playing physical playoff hockey, or are they a dirty team, Dave? It's playoff hockey. If you can't, um, and listen, we all have our biases, right? I, sure. I got into Montreal for game five. I clicked on the uh, local uh, television sports cast, and they led their, uh, their uh, show coming out of game four with Rick Nash going into um, – uh, Carey Price That's in ridiculous. game four on the power play early. <laughs> and Rick Nash was public enemy number one. So I don't – the whining that goes on about um, dirty play, uh, I don't buy it. I think it's it's what goes on this time of the year. And you either figure out how to handle it, and there's sometimes you've got to take it. Or there's sometimes you're going to cross the line. Sometimes you're going to cross the line yourself. Uh, but it's all part and parcel, and at the end of the day, what you want to do is left standing, and sometimes you might be a little banged up, but that's the way it goes. We expect it to be a raucous crowd tomorrow at MSG with the chance to move on to round number two. Uh, first 10 minutes of this game tomorrow, what do you expect at the Garden? Uh, I expect, as far as the um, – I expect the same thing this, the, uh, from the play. The play will dictate what the Garden does. Um, there will be, of, of course, through the anthem, there will be um, the, the response that's generally through the anthems in any building. Uh, the Garden was about as good as it's been in recent history for Game 4. That was really good. But the, range, the Rangers started their game. They won. The first faceoff was a battle. Hayes won it. Holden took it, got it over the red line, and, and put it in the offensive zone. And the Rangers pinned Montreal in their end for about a minute and a half. And that established the pace of the game. And that engaged the crowd. I think what's happened uh, a lot of times, uh, the Rangers haven't been quite as responsible enough uh, to engage the crowd. Uh, so I would hope that the Rangers, you know, the, the, the one game that, that was critical and was criticized, I'm sorry, was game three and, and with good reason. If they, didn't, they didn't play very well. But that game was a one nothing game into the third period. So as poorly as they played, that thing was still within grasp. So net-net, I expect it to be another close one. The goalies are too good to allow it to, to be anything else. I expect uh, Montreal to be who they've been. I uh, expect the Rangers to be who they've been. Uh, and I, I thought going into this series that this thing wouldn't be over till it's over. And I'm still convinced that's the case. And you're right. That game three performance, it was abysmal offensively, but the King did keep him in that game. And, you know, uh, with Henrik Lundqvist, number 30, no matter what he does in the regular season and 
Um, I think some of that stuff is overplayed a little bit, but uh, this postseason and all the postseasons really in the past, he's been brilliant. What is it like for you, just a lover of the sport, uh, just to see what Hank's able to do on a day-in and day-out basis? Well, those of us, I, my this career for me started uh, in Hendrick's rookie year, so I've been privy to um, a goaltending uh, that I'm not sure uh, any franchise has had for the extended time that he's been their goaltender and hasn't won a cup. They they have no chance of doing what they've done um, in in his tenure and his run here without him. Uh, now there's sports talk argument out there about whether his career is validated uh, by winning uh, the cup or not. Uh, I I don't buy that argument in the least. He has not. He has been their best player for 12 years, and the problem is their best player can't score. And um, he will never. It will never be the reason they didn't win. Will be Hendrick. Uh, it. Uh, so I, uh, the, the, the Ranger franchise went seven years without a playoff appearance prior to his coming to the Rangers, and I just said, uh, you know, it, it, it says, and the Ranger fans will rue the day that Hendrik Lundqvist moves on to his next life uh, away from tending the net for the New York Rangers. Well, Dave, I hope tomorrow night when we're both in Madison Square Garden, I hope that I can hear you up on the bridge and that high-pitched screaming because I want this series over in six. I don't want it going back to Montreal. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun. I just at the end of the day, the, uh, the entertainment is only as good as what the clubs play, and it's been an entertaining series uh, so far, and I look forward to game six. No question about that. Dave, we'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Zach. See you. Thanks for calling. Thanks so much. There's uh, Dave Maloney joining us on the Zach Gelb Show. Fox Sports 920, the Jersey 534 is the time the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios. Give me that call one more time. Uh, here's Kenny Albert at the microphone last night. Ryder regains into the Montreal zone, down the left wing with a shot in front, score! <laughs> Rangers <Full> win! <laughs> Mika Zibanejad with the overtime goal! And the I Rangers like win game Take five, that, lead the series three win games to two. Zibanejad set up by Kreider. Mika Zibanejad is the Ranger hero. Two days after his 24th birthday, Rangers win 3-2. All right, give me Sam Rosen. This is from MSG on the television last night. Kreider forced it out of the zone. Kreider moves in. Kreider shot the flank. Score! Score! Zibanejad wins it in overtime. Mika Zibanejad. Listen to the players scream in the background. Rangers win it three to two at fourteen twenty-two of overtime. Love it. That was awesome last night, especially in overtime when Kreider doesn't put the biscuit in the basket. You're thinking, oh my God, here comes Montreal. They're going to go the other way and score. But then you get the Zabinajad goal. Oh, that was awesome last night. Rangers up three-two. And how about the way this team's responded? Because game three was just awful. It was just so putrid of a performance, I was disgusted. And they come in game four with the big effort, get the win. And then in game five last night, even though they weren't great in the second period, and you thought Montreal was probably going to win the game in the second period, the King just kept them in the game. And then they get the Shea goal, which Vici just did a great job controlling the puck. And then Nash was just very aggressive, and it led to uh, the Shea goal. Uh, that was just awesome uh, last night. And that made it 2-2. And then you get into the third period, no one scores, and then in overtime, the Rangers are just the better team. They deserved it, and you just got the goal uh, that you heard a few moments ago. And in this series, I said after Game 3 happened, and I was annoyed. I was heated on the show the next day. You heard my rant. But I did say later on in that show that they win Game 4, and it wouldn't surprise me if they win Game 5, and then I was just jokingly saying, oh, watch, then they'll lose Game 6, and then they'll win Game 7. And that's a toss-up Game 7. Dave's right. I just think they're the better team. And I think they've figured things out and they know that they're the better team. I'm not going to say it's over because as a Ranger fan, I've been taught just look at the Chris Drury goal in the Buffalo series or just look at uh, what happened against the Capitals when they scored at the buzzer to win the opening round game a few years ago and uh, what happened in this series with 17 seconds to play. I've been told not to say that it's over until it's over like Dave was saying. But I have a feeling, if I'm making my prediction, I'll make my prediction right now, yeah, the Rangers are going to win tomorrow night. It's going to be close. 
It's going to be nauseating during the game. You're going to have your heart just jumping all over the place, and you're going to feel sick to your stomach like you usually do during a playoff hockey game, and I can't stand overtime. Oh, overtime's just the worst in the playoffs. When you win, though, it's great, and that's why we're in a jovial mood today. But I like the Rangers tomorrow night. I do, especially if they get that first goal at MSG. In the first 10 minutes of that game, I think it's crucial because you're going to see a desperate, a very desperate Montreal team knowing they have to win the game, and then you're going to see also a Rangers team that's going to want to please their their fans at home because that building is going to be loud uh, tomorrow. If they get a goal early and they go up one nothing early, you got to like their chances. 609-919-9200. I'll take any lead in the postseason uh, with the King, Henrik Lundqvist. High 38 is the time in the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios. Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920. The Jersey will wrap up the show. Coming up next, we'll get you ready for the weekend. 538 is the time on this Friday. Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports, 920 The Jersey, 920 AM in Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer Counties are worldwide on the web at 920thejersey.com. More of the Zach Gelb Show when we come back, everybody.